things. Today I want to talk about the uh, 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 something that's, that's fun for me, and I think some of you might also enjoy it too. It's the idea of quotations at the beginning or end or middle of, uh, of a uh, book chapter or sometimes even a technical paper. Um, and uh, for this, I, I guess the first thing to say is um, a lot of people have written a lot of neat things and, and not all of us have seen them all. And so when, when we see something that we particularly like, uh, it's nice to be able to pass that around to a greater authorship by highlighting it somewhere or other and letting other people know that it exists. Um, and uh, so that's one of the one of the funs about having of having quotations. Now, the, the uh, last few years I, I was working on the tech and metaphon systems, and I'm going to use most of my examples coming from coming from that. It also uh, uh, interacts with writing in some ways. That's why it's not so, so inappropriate for this course. Now, this, there's a, a journal that's been published. It's in volume eight now this year called the Tugboat, the Tech User Group um, uh, newsletter. And one of the things in there. It, in their um, um, format is that they have a quotation at the beginning of every of every issue. And um, here's one, for example, about writing. Uh, Sinclair Lewis felt that his writing had suffered in the 30s because during his marriage he had let her talk him to using professional typists to make the final drafts of his scripts. He now regretted following her advice. He was convinced that if an author didn't do his own retyping, Revising and improving as he went, he lost some control over his work. And Faulkner and O'Hara also did this too. This this is a quotation that was used then in in Tugboat. And here's a quotation from Fowler. No attempt will be made here to describe modern English usage in the matter of hyphens. Its infinite variety defies description. There is one principle, however, that seems to come in at least lip service, and that is the hyphen is not an ornament, but an aid to being understood and should be employed sort of when it helps, helps the understanding. Okay, so this is um, Fowler. Another quote here um, is uh, saying that we need artists to be programmers. And here was one that, that was for the recent issue here. We appreciate all of you who point out our errors. Here's how to keep score. If you find six errors or more, you're a professional. Three to five makes you a trainee. Less than three makes you a desktop publisher. This is the, the, the trend of, uh, of uh, things nowadays. Okay. Now, uh, so they, they begin with, with quotations. And one question is, how do you, how do you find these quotations? Well, um, one thing is you just if you if you uh, live a, a, a reasonably varied life, uh, words are around you all the time, and every once in a while you happen to to, uh, to stumble into something that's particularly apropos. In fact, you stumble into something that's that's particularly apropos out of context often, uh, where you where you can see something in a different way. Uh, one of my favorites is that I was. Um, it, it actually in volume four, I have a lot of things coming up that I'm planning to use as quotations in volume four of the art of computer programming. And this is one of the, re the, the things that keeps me going and saying I do want to write that volume because I have such nice quotations that I can't, you know, I, the text is going to have to be written too, but, I, but I'm really going to be glad to, when I talk about backtracking and I can refer to the Beatles song that there's nobody in my tree. And, and, uh, um, and, and uh, there's, and one of, the, one of the things at the beginning is, is about Techniques of of bit fiddling, and I noticed that in the in the Webster's dictionary, the definition of a bit is that it's a boring tool, and uh, or a boring tool. Uh, anyway, um, and I thought that would that would work rather well for computer scientists. So I was going to use this as a as a joke and a, as a, as an introduction to a lecture I gave about bit fiddling in in Germany. But as I as I was uh, driving to the university to give this lecture. Um, I noticed there was a bumper sticker on the on the car in front of me, or was it on a, a sign on the truck in front of me? It said "Bitte ein Bit," and it turns out that uh, there's uh, there, there's beer brewed in Bitburg. Bitburg is the place that uh, one of those places Ronald Reagan would like to forget about, and and um, and they also have Bitburg there, and there and so their 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 slogan is "Bitte ein Bit." So I could could use you know. Uh, that kind of quotation in there. Well, you, so if you just keep your eyes open, you'll see things that are worth um, uh, that that are worth 
worth repeating. Another thing is, um, though, suppose that you you want to actually find the quotation. You know, you, you've got a format, and and uh, the format calls for uh, having a quotation at the beginning of every chap. Hello. <laughs> No, no commercials on television. Is this right? I'm sorry, I didn't know. You can't buy that beer here. No. no? Okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear any of that. Um, now, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, but th then there's a, then you have the other question that is, if you you have a format that sort of requires you to have these these these, and so you'd like to you'd like to do sort of the best job and and say what's the best possible quotation I could use on topic X and solve for X. And that's what, that's the thing I want to address the rest of this, uh, the rest of this hour, the de various techniques that, um, that, uh, that I have uh, used in order to, in order to do this. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, in, in uh, the tech book, for example, um, the, uh, let's see, where's the table of contents? It has um, 27 chapters and then uh, 10 appendices. 37 uh, places where where I need quotations, and the format called for two quotations at the end of each, and so that was 37 times two, 74. So to find 74 quotations. Then it, then came the uh, Metafont book, which was the same format. So I need, and and it turned out that by great coincidence, um, um, it also oh, there's a preface as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's so that's 76 quotations. So there again. 27 chapters and 10 appendices and uh, and uh, and, so, and and a preface. So, for, so anyway, the um, the idea is to try to find quotations that that ref that, re that, that 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 reflect. Okay, now the, chapter one is the name of the game. Okay, and here's the quotation. Um, and uh, so I was trying to figure out something about names, and I, and this chapter is about the name tech itself. And uh, since it's about the name tech itself, I, I, I actually was able to get a, a quotation about technique, uh, which is um, has to also connects it somehow with art. And uh, the the point of the um, of the chapter is that uh, the word tech comes from a Greek root that means art, and uh, as well as technique, uh, the the same the same Greek word technique. Uh, Comes uh, has led to both has led to both things. This turned out to be a Stanford author, by the way, uh, uh, who um, who was a poet about you know about this time and and, and appeared in uh, some. He was some St Stanford guy that I never had heard of before. How did I how did I find this, <laughs> this particular quote? Well, I don't know. I might have looked up technique in in Bartlett's familiar quotation. So let's take a look at there now. There's, there are many books like this, but Bartlett's is probably the one that's best known. And um, so in this book, it has lots and lots of things that are worth, that are sort of the most, um, according to Bartlett's idea, was the most uh, uh, um, uh, memorable things that these people wrote. And uh, goes on and on um, uh, by Byron Keats, McDonnell, Browning, Fitzgerald, Tennyson, Melville, Dickinson, Twain, Miller, Hopkins, Field, so on, so on, so on. And then at the end, you can look up the um, you can look up individual words. And so if I so if I look up technique, I might find. Oh, uh, let's see. Where is it? Technique. Okay. Well, there's only one reference to technique. It says technique, the very word, 937. And so I probably looked it up and said it wasn't, you know, didn't didn't connect it to art or anything like that. That I wanted to know. Well, here it is. Yes, this is it. Leonard Bacon. This is where I got it. What do you know? Technique, the very word, is like a shriek of art. Okay. So that's where I got that one. Um, and it was a. It's a, something called PhDs, and so uh, it said 1920 at Stanford. I wrote it in here. This is where I found it in the library, 811.4. Uh, and then I, uh, okay, and so I, um, um, 
uh, I give away that first secret, n namely, uh, you know, Bartlett's quotation. Now, that's a that's an easy one. There's there's many other books of quotations in the in the reference room, and and um, uh, there are co there are books of quotations that, that are translated from other languages. There are trans quote there are things called the quotable woman. There there are quotations from black literature. There are quotations from uh, uh, folk sayings and different cultures, and there are there are quotations from different kinds of of um, of uh, groups, and there's complete concordances to Shakespeare and Chaucer. So that and, and every word that those people ever wrote, you can find somewhere in in, in these in these um, in these books. Um, I guess I have to say that one of the the things that for me is the most fun to do if, if I have if I have to say what what do I enjoy most in life I mean I enjoy various things like playing music and things but one of the high, one of the highest for me is to go into a library and have some problem to solve any 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 problem whatsoever but to try to sort of play the library as if it was an organ you know as an instrument um, to to, uh, to to you to to, to use the resources of a great library to solve some problem or other, and one of the neat problems is to take is to is to uh, uh, take a particular theme and see if I can find a good quotation somewhere in the library and how how, how to do that. Now this might not turn turn you all on, but uh, uh, for me this is this is this is really living and. Uh, uh, <laughs> And, and in the reference, and, and f so it came like I, I uh, had, you know, so I, I, I love to go to Stanford Library for an afternoon and with an idea of here I'm supposed to find 76 quotations. Uh, how many can I find today? And I'll be happy if I can find 20 good ones. Uh, but I did the Venice in the British Museum Library and the Harvard. Uh, when I was doing the Metafont book, I had the uh, Widener Library at Harvard and the Boston Public Library. and. And uh, there's, you know, m many other great libraries, and you know, do things at Berkeley and and uh, New York and Philadelphia and so on. Now the um, Princeton, yeah, uh, yeah, so on. Now um, each of these reference rooms has a different collection of these of these books of quotations, and so and so uh, I, I and and they're usually reasonably well indexed, and so you can look in the back and you can you can get some idea, and so that's a that's a beginning of a, a beginning of, of how to how, how to do it, and and, and uh, some of the things are very easy to find quotations. So then you've got to, but then you've got to do uh, the next the next level and uh, um, and get a really good quotation. Now here's for example is a chapter called Fine Points of Mathematics Typing, and uh, I needed I had four chapters in a row about mathematics. And uh, so I needed some, some something interesting to say about about uh, about about mathematics, and so I like this one, which I had I had just heard about it somewhere. Mathematicians are like Frenchmen; whatever you say to them, they translate into their own language, and at once it is something entirely different. And now here's an, here's a very good one apropos to our course. It says the best notation is no notation. This is you remember your homework assignment. <laughs> Whenever it is possible to avoid the use of a complicated alphabetic apparatus, avoid it. A good attitude to the preparation of written mathematical exposition is pretend that it is spoken. Pretend that you are explaining to a friend in a long wood, uh, on a long walk in the woods with no paper available. Fall back on symbolism only when it's really necessary. This is from that how much is uh, uh, I mentioned him before. Uh, how, do you, how do you do those line breaks? Now the line breaks on the uh, are done by myself. By hand uh, on this right, uh, when it's, when something is flush right, um, the the only way to uh, if any kind of automatic breaking looks bad if it's flush right, if <laughs> ragged left um, like this, and uh, and so I I would play with these until I got them to the point where I liked them, and each one each one was individually played with. Um, but speaking of line breaks, <laughs> there's. Uh, there's here's here's a chapter on line breaks. Uh, this is how tech breaks paragraphs into lines. Okay, so when the author objects to a hyphenation, he should be asked to add or cancel or substitute a word or words that will prevent it. The authors who insist on even spacing always, slightly divisions always, do not clearly understand the rigidity of types. And this is I had come across this when I was reading uh, the history of the uh, of what printers do when they when they do line breaking. Here was the one by Shaw. 
said that whenever William Morris found a line that justified awkwardly, he, he altered the wording to make solely for the sake of making it look well in print. And I, I must say I do that. <clears throat> um, when a proof has been sent me with two or three lines so widely spaced to make a gray band, I've often rewritten it so as to fill up the lines better. But I'm sorry to say that my object has generally been so little understood the compiler has spoilt all the rest of the paragraph instead of mending the former bad word. So, so um, that's uh, uh, you also have to have control over the type over the over the spacing yourself. If you if you're the author and you, you rewrite it so that it's going to look better, uh, but then somebody else doesn't understand your intention, that that, that screws up the other way. Uh, speaking of that, though, the format of this book, uh, the book designer designed it with a very lo long paragraph indentation, of un abnormally large indentation here, um, and uh, this. This uh, is also it seems to be a, uh, a style of the 80s. I think the Harvard Business Review, I noticed, uh, um, a magazine has this. I ran across this once uh, a year or two ago. And, um, and something that you notice immediately when you start using that format is that it, it's not that unusual for a paragraph to end with just one word or two words. Uh, which is less than the length of the indentation of the paragraph indent. And so I had to rewrite a lot of paragraphs to add a couple of words at the end in order to make it, in order to make it look, not look bad. The, the book designer, um, you know, makes it makes a nice looking book because it was a theme that was carried, carried, carried through in all the other uh, problems of the format that uh, this end indentation helped to unify the, the book design, but it was, it was difficult for the, uh, you know, for, for, for rewriting to make it look good because there are a lot of cases. Where, you know, I mean, you can imagine on 100 pages, um, uh, 400 paragraphs. Uh, what are the chances that you'll get all uh, all possible distributions? Uh, and and uh, you have to you have to rewrite for, for that. <clears throat> okay. Now. Um, and uh, these are things that I just ran across while I was studying the, uh, while I was looking up what people had to say about about printing. Uh, so there was, so, so that was not solved in a particular way. Now what's this one? Displayed equations. So here is talking about printing of of um, mathematics with uh, and how, and just some comments that people had made about about displayed equations. Nothing funny there, so I won't. I won't go on. Now, what about macros? Now, here was the one. I had a chapter called Definitions, also known macros. Now, how would I find a, a suitable quote for for that? Well, I this one was this one uh, had me working for a while. I, I, I went up to I, I, I found uh, um, uh, 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 first of all, I found Disraeli's quote. I hate definitions was fairly uh, was fairly good, but uh, but then it turned out that that uh, I found that Macro was the the name of a of a corrupt Roman politician, uh, and uh, and so in old history books it was possible to to trade to 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 get a quote about about uh, this was Macro who uh, uh, who didn't last very long, but he got into he got into a few a, a few places there. Okay, now uh, let me see. How did I stumble across his name? I I I believe I I was looking into all kinds. Well, first of all, the Oxford English Dictionary wouldn't have helped me here, but Oxford English Dictionary is a good source for the hard ones because they have quotations of they 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 cite the word in its historical context, and and often they ch they choose interesting. Interesting things to cite, but um, but this particular one, I must have gotten gotten it through some index or other that, uh, that I just happened to notice. Uh, let's see now, what do we got here? Alignment. Okay, this is talking about making tables, aligning things into columns, and um, and so I. Uh, uh, and so here I thought, okay, I'll do do something a little different. I'll I'll, I'll quote one of Dudeney's puzzles, which was about uh, about putting things into rows and columns. And then the then the answer page is actually has a solution to this puzzle. Um, uh, so in the quotation. And then here and then I and I like Agatha Christie, so I was reading a, one of her novels and I noticed that they talked about fifth columnists and so on. That's, that seemed to be something I could. I could appreciate, I could appropriate here. Um, now, the title of her book, of her book, NRM, 
re reminds me that I have another book here which came out in this series of computer and typesetting, which is all about um, about letter forms. Can, uh, can you back off of this uh, to get the, the page spread and, and all the symbols? Each in this book, every letter uh, is given with an you know with a computer program on the right hand pages that drew the, pro the, the the letters on the on the left hand pages. And in order to to uh, lighten this up, I I um, put quotations on the bottom every once in a while of a. Where it, would, where it would refer to things. I didn't have too many quotations in this particular section, obviously, but I know I do have some coming in here before long. Okay. Well, mostly when I get into the letters, I had things to say. Here's the page with a semicolon in it, and, and there was a, and um, my wife had remembered that she that she had read something that she uh, memorable about semicolons, where there's a, a Somerset Mom story about a um, an author who had um, had discovered the comic possibilities of the semicolon, and, and she had and she was she had a humor of punctuation in her writing, and I wanted to show you this this quote because um, Mary Claire, uh, I understand who's going to be our. Our, uh, you know, our, our lecture in a couple of weeks is uh, sometimes called Miss Comma, uh, like there's Miss Manners, you know, and so on. Um, and uh, so she's supposed to uh, know, I don't know about if she's an authority on semicolons, but she's supposed to be especially good about commas. And, and, uh, and so try to, I, so there aren't too many quotations about particular letters, but here was one that I, well, let me go back to this one first. I got one from James Thurber has a story called The Wonderful O, and, um, and this is a children's story that where he's trying to uh, teach them the alphabet, and, and, but he, abolish, he abolishes all the O's in, in his story. Um, and then in the page on E, I had room for a quote here, which is uh, from a very interesting Bell Labs report by, by Gilbert called The Capacity Form Formula for a Binary Communication Link in Which Wrong Output Digits Occur in Bursts. Our work also has cryptographic and linguistic application. Now, if you look very closely, he, he gives the clue here to his whole quote here. He says, in particular, our writing contains only 25 symbols, A, B, C, D, F, G, and to Z. Thus, the symbol of maximum probability in ordinary writing is missing from ours. He wrote this entire report without using the letter E, except in his own name, <laughs> which, is, which he couldn't help. And um, so... Uh, uh, that and and uh, you read through the report and it actually proves a a, uh, a reasonable mathematical theorem. But he just, he set this as an extra constraint that he just wouldn't use any any words that had the had the letter E in them. You know. um, here's Bierce. Now Bierce is a, um, wrote the uh, uh, you know he was a famous uh, uh, San Franciscan who wrote the. Uh, uh, the Devil's Dictionary and many other. He was he had regular columns in the was it the Chronicle or the Examiner? I don't know. Anyway, he and um, uh, so uh, I, I read through the, the the Devil's Dictionary because it was likely to have something quotable. You know, besides, it's a lot of fun. And uh, here he's talking about about the letter M. He said um, uh, two schools of M'sters, whether the letter is henceforth has two sides of a triangle or three sides of a square. And, and uh, he's talking about the you know, style of shaping of the letter M. And so this was appropriate for the page in which we have letter M in there. Here's, a, here's something that I, 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 I uh, Benjamin Franklin um, was, was uh, interested in, in typography, and so he uh, he writes a letter to Bodoni, the inventor of this of a type style very similar to the one that I'm that I'm um, sh showing in this book here, and and uh, he but he doesn't like the the letter T in in Bodoni's title page, and and so he writes him a letter saying this. Now, I um, how did I find that particular reference? I believe I was invited to give a talk in the Franklin Institute, and I was, and I was started to read, read about Benjamin Franklin's interest in in printing because of that. Um, okay. One of the quotes at the beginning of this book is is about the whole style of type that I followed in the book, 
and that is, uh, and, and that's a, a, and it's a type that talks about this is a kind of letter that's capable of greater vulgarity and degradation than was ever the case with older fonts. So, so um, in other words, uh, uh, a lot of people don't care for this style of letters that I that I've got in these books uh, throughout history. Um, now. Uh, <clears throat> the the um, uh, the most fun I think comes when you can when you can take things um, a bit out of context and let's see this one is called output routines and I and uh, I didn't know how to get um, what to say about about um, Outputs, but I got Leontief had published a lot about. Uh, uh, he was a famous economist who had who had things about about um, uh, input output the, his input output uh, system. And so I thought if I read enough of his stuff, I could find that he used the word output in some way that would be that would be also inter in interpretable with, with respect to um, uh, to type to typography and, uh, and and algorithms and so on. And so here are technical has something to do with tech, I guess, and things like this. And there's there's a, there's a, something about changes in output. So I don't know. Now, summary was a hard one. I had three chapters called <laughs> summary. Summary of vertical mode, then summary of horizontal mode, and summary of math mode. And how was I going to get six different quotations about summary? And then six more for the Metafont book. So. So uh, but I didn't realize I had the Metaphon book to do when I started with this one. So first of all, this is summary of vertical mode, and um, and I was a and I found um, um, one re reasonably relevant thing, probably in the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, but then this one was was amazing to me that I was able to find something with was was talking about verticality of composition and modes because you know had vertical and mode in the same in the same sentence now uh, you could do that if you had all these texts online in the computer you could say you know which sentences have both vertical and mode in there but but uh, this was a uh, it was talking about architecture and uh, but um, that was uh, I believe on, it, I found it under mode probably in, in the in the thing there. Okay, now let's see. Summary of horizontal mode. Um, there's um, there was a uh, quote that said, "You may reduce all verticals into horizontals." And and incidentally, I uh, uh, in this chapter I had referred back to the vertical mode ch chapter to. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, everything. A lot of the things in vertical also applied to horizontal. And Moxon happened to be also a book who wrote, a man who wrote a famous book on printing. So this was this turned out to be an amazing, amazing find. Between when I, I must have found that just by looking up for for quotes uh, in Oxford English Dictionary about vertical and horizontal. But then I was running short, and so I I needed something about horizontal mode. So I got to quote Tech itself. Um, and and in, in a pinch, you can always write your, you can always quote yourself. And, you know, and and, uh, and uh, Professor Spitz in the history department said uh, that uh, Kai Lai Chung from math had come to him and was writing a book and wanted some, you know, and asked, asked Spitz for some for some um, uh, ideas. And uh, Spitz then uh, came and had three or four, but he couldn't think of the other one. He said, so Kai Lai said, you know, you just say, okay, then you say something. Just give me anything, and I can quote you. So this was it. But, this was a uh, reasonable quote for uh, uh, also for, for the meaning of the <coughs> of the of the chapter. And in summary of math mode, what could I could I do there? Oh, here I was able to um, to, to take um, uh, one from the style manual of Chicago Press, just saying that math is is tough and expensive. But here was here was a here was one that turned out that uh, I I had. Um, Discovered by being interested in whales that um, there was a there was a um, uh, uh, folk tale about someone named Math in um, in, in the Mabinogion the the, uh, the this this goes on a little before t time of King Arthur I think and 
and it, and the translator, he's a professor at UCLA who uh, who, who uh, has some neat correspondence with trying to get, to learn more about math and so on. He he's the one who told me how to hy hyphenate some Welsh words that I used in in uh, in an example. But he but uh, so anyway, this uh, um, has both math and summary in 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 the sentence, and so I could get. Uh, um, could, uh, could could find the two here and see recover. Now let's just. I, but talking about summary, I should go to the next one. This is uh, for errors. Um, uh, is another. The last chapter is about recovery from errors, and uh, and and there's there's a lot of neat things to say about errors. But now let's go to the Metaphon book. I had the same three. I had to do. <clears throat> summary chapters there, not 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 quite as many. So summary of expressions was um, uh, was there, and I'm running out of things to say about summaries, and so I um, uh, I got I had to use expressions here, so I got to talk about expressionists, I guess uh, by by looking into uh, into uh, one of the the novels that was. Uh, where his, his novels were serialized on public television. I can't, I can't, what's the name of the series? I can't think of it anyway. But then Thomas More had written about about things that were well remembered and some summarily rehearsed, and so I could, could use that one. Um, and and uh, then there is um, things about. Um, the language as a whole and, and, free, free, and, and detail, and so I. I try. I I tried to get some quotations about details. In fact, I worked very hard about the about uh, trying because a lot of the of a user manual is is inevitably filled with details and uh, and there's um, and and so I had heard I had heard that um, let's see the architect of our house told told us that Mies van der Rohe had always said to, to the students that God is in the details. And that this is uh, for him. Uh, I mean, he he was one like me who liked minutia and, and focusing on getting details straight. You see, uh, what? God. God was yes, and also Mies yes, <laughs> and um, um, <clears throat> and so I wanted to find where this where Mies had said this so that I could quote me. Mies is the same. God is in the details. In fact, I. I had said I had used I had used it in a lecture once, and somebody came up to me and afterwards said that was a wonderful quotation from Mies, you know, almost. And so then I, so um, I started looking through all of Mies's publications, and I couldn't find a single, a single um, um, uh, thing. And, and and then I I finally, uh, but I, uh, so so I I wrote to two of the people who. Um, uh, who had recently written biographies of Mies, and I and I and I also met an architect in Boston, uh, and he said yes, he had heard this. Uh, he wanted he was interested in helping me find this quote, quote also. And so I got back finally a reference to a man who who said this was this is something that Mies liked to say, and he had published this in architectural form. But I couldn't get a, a direct reference. I'd read a lot of Mies's speeches where he would, had a chance to say it and never said it, and um, and then I then there was this other biography. Oh, oh, yeah, and one of the biographers wrote back to me and said, yeah, "This was a, as far, this was a, you know a lot of people have said that Mies, uh, that this was one of Mies' favorite, favorite maxims, but uh, they they didn't know, you know he could assure me that Mies had said it, but he didn't know where. Uh, and then uh, and then I got another reference uh, to somebody who, who says, um, no, um, Mies never did say this, but it, but people have have." Um, but but actually it comes from um, uh, French uh, uh, a French essayist who wrote millions of things uh, saying le bon dieu est sous le détail or something I can't I have a terrible French accent or something like this uh, but giving no reference whatsoever um, <clears throat> so I started looking through French books of quotations and under this and I and I found four or five really neat things about details. Uh, and uh, but not but never yet have have I have I discovered uh, what, what uh, the source of this of this phrase God is in the details and I'm still hoping for it. Well, here was the opposite approach with with Thoreau saying uh, 
uh, your life is frittered away by detail, and uh, you should uh, forget about details. Let's see, recovery from errors. This is one of my favorite. Uh, this is one of my favorite poems here. Perhaps my favorite of all. Uh, you can read it for yourself by Pete Hein. I'm having this this carved in. Um, I'm having this carved uh, in stone and uh, by some by some stone cutters in England to, be, uh, to to keep in my garden. I just like this. I think it's a fairly fairly good summary of uh, of one of my mottos in life: is to not be afraid to make mistakes, but try to learn from them and so on. Um, now the other quote here is. Um, uh, is by Father Font, and um, since I ha this is a book about fonts, I I knew that if the, and, I, and I, then I I learned that there was a, a French a Spanish explorer who, who was one of the pe first people to come to California in, in the uh, in the Portola expedition, and his and he was the one who kept the diary of the trip, and and um, so uh, his name was Font, and I and so. Great. He must say something in there that I can quote just because his name is Font. Uh, that would that would be be uh, relevant. And now, in fact, the directions of the route is also some, the kind of thing that you do when you're drawing letters. And so, uh, uh, so this turned out. To, but I had to read his whole diary in order to find that one. I mean, um, it was fascinating, though. <laughs> I, mean, it wasn't, I didn't I didn't mind a minute of it. I mean, he he, he really told about the. Uh, uh, the politics of the situation, and, and he put his whole. I mean, he, I don't think he, know, he knew this diary was going to be for publication, particularly. And um, but he, he was writing it uh, for his other the other fellows, his Jesuit colleagues, in in Mexico. And um, uh, so uh, I, I talked to the man who uh, who took Father Font's role in the bicentennial reenactment of the Portola. Uh, expedition. They they went from Mexico and came back up through here, and, and uh, so I. And there was one man who was playing the part of of Font in this thing, and I and uh, and uh, he was a friend of of um, one of our grad students here. So I so I talked to him about it, and so on. Um, uh, so that was a that was a nice. Um, um, I think I probably got some, got to use something else of him when he discovered. When they discovered El Palo Alto, I think I have a quote from him about that. Let's see. Font, font, font. Um, Fray Pedro Font, 139. Let's see, another, another one. Uh, we, yeah, here we go. We arrived at the Royal de San Francisco, beside which stream is the redwood tree I spoke of yesterday. This is the tree that, that Palo Alto is named after. Um, I measured its height with the graphometer. Uh, so you get used to things about um, numbers and roots and, and dots and numbers and sites, which are very, very much like the diagram on the same page. And so, and so uh, uh, this is. This is a quote uh, apropos. Okay. Now, when I so let's see. So, so uh, sometimes the the um, uh, the relevance of the quotation is in the is not in the words, but in the t in, in the in, in the thing below it. Let's see. Let me show you that. What is um, let's see. Making boxes. Uh, do I have? Let's see boxes. That was one I. What, what can you say about boxes? That's interesting. So, uh, so Shaw had another thing in that same article about a rule. He said the only thing that never looks right is a rule. There is not in existence a page with a rule on it that cannot be instantly and obviously improved by taking the rule out. Um, but there's another thing about boxing that I found in the OED, and. For this, I had to, this was one that I got from the British Library because I looked up the the original. The, I decided to use the original spelling of all the because a lot of the quotations come from from very old times. So I decided to use the spelling of the in the original. I looked up every single quote, you know, in the in the original to see if there was more than Bartlett said. You know, if there was something interesting before or after. Um, and uh, boxing is is uh, something that doctors do. Or used to do uh, for 
and to, to pro prohibit bloodletting. I don't know this, so I thought thought it was a nice bloody quotation to, to use there. Um, <clears throat> but they see boxes. There's something about boxes here where. Uh, okay, here is one. Stevenson and Osborne. Very little does the amateur dwelling at home at ease comprehend the labors and perils of the author. And so it's talking about the author's peril, but the the real connection with boxes is in the is in the title of their of their book, not the not the uh, not, not the thing that they said. And that was an interesting novel that I got that I read just to see if it had anything interesting to say about boxes in the novel. And it was right here in chapter one where it had the best one. But, and a neat movie was made from that from that story. Uh, I have several boxes in my memory. That is just so. So uh, you know, there there was a uh, in the uh, art of computer programming. There was a quotation from Hamlet: "In the temple of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond from the temple of my memory. I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, or something like this." It was just appropriate for garbage collection. Um, the, talking about memory and records. So so to me, part of the game is finding uh, is trying to find something that was interesting that, that was a little bit uh, out of context. Now let's see. Um, there was one thing I should, I guess, like people in this class will know. There was, I, I, what, I, what I tried, I, I, I tried basically in this book here to um, um, uh, to find to to set a, a standard of excellence for quotations because I enjoy libraries so much, um, and so I came back and I had most of the problems solved and then but some of the harder ones uh, to go with and I had one chapter where I just was was completely stuck and uh, let's see if I can find it in the uh, let's see if I can find it in the index because because it's a it's something that only people only a few people will understand why these quotations are are interesting but I had to fill the page with something and and I did satisfy my own let's see now look under grim I guess I, um, yeah, page 73. Uh, this is a chapter called Algebraic Expressions, and I didn't know, and, and the idea is, is, is that you're, we're describing pictures in terms of algebraic expressions. And uh, here is a uh, here are two quotes. Now, can anybody t tell tell what I what what makes these interesting to me at least? Your fascination with puns. My fascination with puns. Yeah. No. That, well, the actual thing was though. How would I find these particular? How would I find this particular thing about um, about the express? No, no words can express it or expression. How would I? How would I actually track? I mean, I tell you right now, this is not in the OED. This cannot be found in any books of quotations. Nobody has ever thought these, these, these sentences were in any way remarkable. I use the online. I have yes, we have Wuthering Heights and we have Grimm's, Grimm's Fairy Tales online, and so we can do a computer search for uh, for them and find every use of the word expression or express in those. And uh, so I was, so that that was the way I you know so I decided to put those two on the same page because that was that was the reason and they aren't they aren't bad quotations but I mean they're just that was the only the only way to get uh, 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 to, to get it now see the some of the appendices were the hardest here and see if I if I can remember there's something called generic font files now generic font files is a is a description of a file format. And um, uh, and I was able to, uh, I think, find a reference here to files, you, in the other kind, you, uh, uh, and then and then to get a, um, something about <coughs> Linnaeus, who set up the whole thing is about uh, about genera and orders and so on in in, in botany, um, and so. Uh, you know, was able, found something that had to do with files and printing, because he here he referred to gen generic characters, which sounds like it has to do with printing and files have to do with. Uh, uh, now let's see. 
<clears throat> Here's another one about details, Oscar Wilde. Details are always vulgar. Um, I'm talking in this chapter about about point system of typography and so having a, having the source of the of when somebody actually invents a concept is is reasonable. Um, there's a there's an appendix about examples in both in both of them. And um, and for this um, uh, here, by the way, going back to the original sp spelling was was uh, difficult in this in this one because it used the old thorn character uh, for the for a th and and I had to make a new symbol into in the alphabet in order to typeset it but uh, an example in doing is more commendable than teaching or preaching and that's a reasonably good thing to say about examples um, I had the same appendix in t in the textbook and I had to have a, something to um, uh, to write about examples. And uh, so I gave an example, a quote here from Mary Claire Van Lunen, um, say, saying the epigraph is among the most delightful of scholarly habits. Donald Canoe's work on fundamental algorithm would be just as important if he hadn't begun with a quotation from Betty Crocker, but not so enjoyable. Part of the fun of an epigraph is turning a source to an unexpected use. And so I got to quote her uh, <laughs> when I was running out of uh, of uh, that, okay. Um, and uh, one of the, th the things in my chapter on examples was giving the macros that typeset this this part of the format of the. I mean, this is the book is being used as an example of itself, and and so um, uh, it was reasonable to to do that. Now, in the previous chapter is called um, is called uh, dirty tricks. And um, and uh, so he, uh, I here I took two quotations from detective stories uh, about sh shortcuts and and uh, using using methods that are displayed in the other part of the book. I see, but in the in but I had a I found in the uh, when I. When I did the Metaphon book, I found a, a very in, a, a very nice looking up the word dirty and so on. And, uh, I guess I just looking at proverbs, I found that there was a very nice uh, proverb from Jamaica. It says every house has its dirty corner, and um, and uh, it's also it's true about houses. But I also thought it was as appropriate to have a, a corner of, of the manual uh, about dirty tricks that that, that could be used for that purpose. Um, in, the, in the appendix A in both books was, was, about, um, <clears throat> was about answers to exercises. And uh, I need a lot of quotations about answers to exercises because, because the art of computer programming, uh, uh, each, each uh, book has, has, has answers to exercises and so on. Um, uh, so um, I, I was I, I allowed to quote myself again here uh, by quoting the preface to refer to the answers. And then there's a Shakespeare. Shakespeare you can you can find by looking up in the um, in the uh, complete concordances of Shakespeare to see when he, what he had to say about answers. He says, "Call these foul offenders to their answers." I think that was kind of kind of nice. Um, how another place Shakespeare had said here, how answer you for yourselves? And uh, I put that second because I, I used the same quote from the for, for, from the tech book this time in the tech book uh, to uh, to indicate that a person does the, uh, the answers uh, this way. And let's see the the very last uh, the very last uh, let's see the index is a, is another one that I that I needed a lot of quotations on. Um, because most of my books have indexes. And so in the uh, Art of Computer Programming, I found a, a wonderful thing when I was reading an old Sears Robot catalog. They have reprinted some of the old catalogs. And I looked through it browsing, and I noticed that it said in there, if you can't find it in the index, look very carefully throughout the entire catalog. <laughs> and so I thought that was good. <laughs> and oh, that's in the Art of Computer. I've already used that. And so I have to, um, and so, so what I found is um, 
but I did find um, uh, a man who wrote this in his book. He says, I, uh, so essential that I consider an index to be to every book that I propose to bring a bill into Parliament to deprive an author who publishes a book without an index the privilege of copyright, moreover to subject him for a pecuniary penalty. Yet, from difficulties started by my printers, my own books have hitherto been without an index. You know, so. um, and uh, that was in the Metafont book. In the tech book, the, um, uh, it's about typesetting, and so I got to use uh, quotations of from uh, uh, saying that important works should have an index. And so then it tells about an index. Uh, but this was one of my favorites uh, from the biography of PDQ Bach. He says, important references are given in boldface tell size numbers indicate fleeting references, whereas numbers parentheses refer to mere implications or unwarranted extrapolations. Asterisks are used to identify particularly distasteful passages. And so on. So, um, well, I hope you can understand why I think this is fun and uh, uh, and uh, also uh, perhaps worthwhile to to broaden uh, uh, to broaden uh, uh, perspective. It's a it's a it's a it's a hunt that uh, uh, is exciting. I think to anybody who who uh, is not real narrow minded and and uh, to, to, to me the most I, I just recommend uh, trying to go and. Play, play libraries as musical instruments. That, uh, you'll, you'll you'll find it a lot of a lot of pleasure.